Hello, everybody. Catholic Schools Week is such an important week for our parish. First of all, because we have a school and you are all a part of it. But we have a school because the parish and its people, your parents, your grandparents, even your great-grandparents, they sacrificed and they created a school, they built a school where our children from this community can learn and learn not just about the world, but about the Lord Jesus, about our God and how our God calls us. Today's celebrations are all about us giving thanks. In fact, the word Eucharist, when we say we're going to Mass or we're going to the Eucharist, the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. That's what the word means. We give thanks to God. And so today, we're giving thanks to God, not just for our Catholic school, but for Holy Family Catholic School, a school that was dedicated to the Holy Family. And we're celebrating that our community has received a call from God to make sure that the needs of our children are met and that we do that not only happily, but well, that we do it well in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're giving thanks for the call and we're giving thanks also that we have such people willing to answer that call. So our masses today on, on, for our school mass and on the weekend, they're all going to be in thanksgiving for our Catholic school. And with that, I'm going to have our principal, Mr. St. Alban, start with just a little bit of his thoughts. Thank you, Father. Morning, boys and girls. And good morning to our parishioners. As Father said, every year during Catholic Schools Week, we take a day to recognize all those people that Father mentioned in our church that make sure that our school has all the things that we, that we need. And there's a lot. Textbooks, Chromebooks, pencils, paper, teachers, and all the things that we love most, music, art, gym, library, and the playground, everything. And they're here every day, every year. Our parishioners, they didn't go away when we had to stay home from school. And all the people that you saw in church whenever you came, they're still around. And they always will be around to help our school because that's one of the ways that they do God's work. Some of the older kids already understand, but for our younglings, you're, to help you understand what that means, is it's kind of like when you save your money because you want to buy something really special for somebody that you love a lot. That's what our church people do. They help Holy Family School, so that we have what we need, and I like to use these terms, they're kind of funny sounding, but um, they give us what we need to teach you real good and do some really good learning on you. So that's why we have Parishioner Appreciation Day during Catholic Schools Week. We want to say thank you for our school to all the people of Holy Family that take really good care. One last call out, and it is, first of all, to you children, to remember the school where you learned to le read and write. To remember your grade school, too. A lot of times people graduate from their colleges and they remember the colleges they went to. But for our alumni, for the, all of the, the one-time children that are now adults, to remember how important this school is not just for those of us who went through, but for the future. Remember the school that you went to and learned to read and write into. Make sure our schools continue with your support because it's other people's support that helped you, right? There's an old saying, and I like it, it's kind of funny. If you see a turtle on a post, nice and high, 
He didn't get there by himself. And when you're all successful and you're high up in the world, it will be people behind you that helped you to get there. And then you have to turn around and help other people be successful. And it's what we do, and it's how we all answer our call. So we thank God for all the people who have answered that call, and we pray that our investment in our youth is an investment in the future and their successes, and that we all turn around and help other generations be successful too. With that, we'll take a quiet moment, and then we'll begin our Mass. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather for Mass today, we truly give thanks for Holy Family School, for our teachers, for all those who make sacrifices for us to have our opportunities and, and most of all, that we continue to be successful in making disciples. Preparing for this Mass of Thanksgiving, we ask God to be with us with his mercy. Lord Jesus, you come for the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to teach us and guide us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, good shepherd, lead us by your love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all of our mind and everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We turn to our first reading. Just that make him 
and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that in that of the way to do it. Thanks be to God. Oh God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. Oh God, we ponder your mercy within a, your temple. Ponder your mercy within your temple. As we had heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God makes it turn forever. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. O Lord, be in our minds, be on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and give them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take no nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. And whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with many and all who, who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Go ahead and be seated. One of the two things that kind of go together in Catholic Schools Week is our understanding of thanksgiving for all that we have and being a Catholic school but also our understanding of discipleship, our understanding of vocation, of what it means to hear God calling and then respond to it as his followers, as his disciples. And in today's Mass, we hear one of the first times that Jesus tells his apostles that he's going to send them out into the world to preach and to cure and to make a difference in the world. And you know, having that time in Catholic Schools Week should remind us more than anything, our schools are here to make Catholic disciples, to make Christian disciples, to make people 
who will listen to God's call and then go out and do something in the name of Jesus, just like those first that were sent out and even cured people. You know what? It doesn't matter what school we're in. When we're helping our youth to grow up, we're also helping them to know about the world and to use the tools like science or math, or for that matter, knowing more about God so that we can make the world a better place. And discipleship, answering the call or your vocation, is about making the world a better place in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, our benefactors, our people before us, built this church, built our school. And they did so so that the world would be better as more and more people got the opportunity to learn and study and be close to Jesus here at this parish and our school of Holy Family. We are grateful for that. There's a theologian named Frederick Buchner. Some people say Buckner. But he wrote, and I think it's a nice definition of what it means to answer a vocation or answer a call. What he wrote was, it's kind of like a crossroad when you find your vocation. It's a crossroad when you see when you see in the world great need, when you see something that has to be done or somebody that needs help so that you see the great need, something happens that somebody has to address. And then the other part is when you can see that God is calling you and not only calling you, but you find yourself, you find great joy you find great satisfaction in being the one that God uses to help address those needs. So that you realize, I'm the one that God is calling by name to help this person. Or I'm the one that's being called by name to be a teacher in a, in a Catholic school. Or I'm the one that's going to use my resources when I'm successful as a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or maybe even a researcher that I'm going to use all of my mind, my heart, and my soul to help meet the needs of the world. Now, for Christians, what we do isn't just about how much money we make. Jesus sends out, us out into the world to make our families and our homes, our communities and our churches places where the needs of the world are trying to be answered by disciples. And that's vocation. You know, a beautiful vocation is the one that your parents answered. To not only raise their families, but to be people who raise their families to be disciples and to understand the world in a way that knows God's a part of it right now. In very real, God's a part of it. Helping us to see what God wants us to see so that we can do for God what God wants us to do. What a beautiful way to understand vocation. And then vocation isn't, it, it is certainly about us finding priests and sisters and doctors and nurses and teachers. It's about finding all of those ways that people specifically answer God's call to be a disciple and a disciple planted in the world. And communities like East Tawas or Tawas City or Ascoda or Hale or Augre that were planted here as disciples that Jesus sent us here to be his hands and feet, and to do it in a way that we feel fulfilled, we feel happy. We know God has us planted in what we choose to do in life and where we choose to live and to be his disciples there. And then for many of us to know that that's so true, we're like a peg in the true hole 
that we know God wants us to be a priest. Or we know God wants us to be a musician in a church. Or a lector or a reader. Or a deacon. Or a teacher. Or for that matter, how about the people who accept the call to do things like, I'm going to work so that garbage doesn't build up in cities. And we're going to keep our cities clean. And that's going to be my business or my vocation. We need people in every walk of life, but to do it in a way that they know they're helping answer God's call for the service of others. For the service of others. And to know that God put us there and sent us there, just like he did the apostles. So at the beginning of Mass, I said that the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. So this Eucharist, we're giving thanksgiving for our school. And we're giving thanksgiving for our call and all the calls that were received and answered when we got people who built this place up. And then secondly, we're celebrating vocation and what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be an apostle. You know, the word apostle means something too. It means one who was sent. A person who is sent. And sent by who? Sent by Jesus. Sent by Jesus for a purpose. To answer a need, a great need sometimes in the world. Sometimes not even happy needs, like trying to figure out a pandemic. But is it a great need? Certainly is. Do we need people to step up and kind of be the heroes that do that? We sure do. And so God calls people to be a part of that. So today in Catholic Schools Week, we give thanks for those who have answered the call. And then given us the opportunity to have the eyes to see the needs in the world, but then the vocations to do something about those needs. Doing it in the name of Jesus. That's why our school exists. So we give thanks and we listen for our call. We bring our prayers before the Lord. For Pope Francis, Bishop, and Carly, our Apostolic Week Administrator, and all the church leaders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the medical field working on cures for the coronavirus and helping to vaccinate everyone, that they be filled with God's strength and wisdom so they may continue the good works. Be great to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholic schools, that they continue to be able to lovingly educate, educate students, helping to grow a Christian generation who spreads the word of God. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community continue to show support for all who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died that they may see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, we thank you for all the opportunities you give us to grow in your love. We thank you for our parish and our places of worship. We thank you for our schools and the opportunity to learn not only of the world, but of your love woven through it. We thank you for the opportunity to learn what thanksgiving to God means. And we thank you for the opportunity that you believe in us so much that you send us as disciples into the world to be people who cure, to be people who have hope, to be people of great love. 
hear our prayers this day. Give us a heart of thanksgiving and a heart of service to you. We, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. By the meaning of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled himself when he shared it? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice, of humble and with contrite hearts. Wash me, O Lord, from my hand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim again and again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our Bishop Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death and resurrection brought life to the world. 
by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and your call. Never let us be parted from you. Lord Jesus, for those who cannot receive your true presence, your body and blood this day sacramentally, come spiritually into their hearts. Let them know their presence as you are already there, and they have united their lives to you. Help us always to be close to you, to follow your call, and to let you lead us, sharing in your spirit. Never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life of him. The body of Christ. Our communion antiphon. Let your face shine on your servants, Lord. Save us in your merciful love. O Lord, let us never be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith, may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Part of Catholic Schools Week was writing your essays, and I know that we've picked out a couple to share with, the, with our parishioners for the weekend, but we want to have them read to you right now as well. And I know that we all give thanks, all of you give thanks, for your opportunity where 
We're thankful for our school and for our Catholic school. Maybe more now than ever before. But at the same time, we are together answering God's call for the future. So with that, we'll ask our, our essays to be presented to us. She always puts her best efforts, time, and money into the food. That is why I love the food. I love the teachers such as Mrs. Hemker, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Boucher, Mrs. Pena, you can't forget Mr. Bill the janitor, Mrs. Webster, Mrs. Look, and our principal and secretary, Mr. And Mr. St. Aubin and Mrs. Gaucher. Math class for Mrs. Hemker is always awesome because she is awesome and always puts it in a way that is easy and always understandable. Holy Family School is always helping you and loving you with all their hearts. And there you also know that God the Father is always watching and loving you with all his heart too. In conclusion, you would just overall love it here because of all the things that I just stated. I love all these things because they are fun, nice, they taste good, and or you feel like you are appreciated. I also think that all my friends and all the employees at Holy Family School would agree with all the things that I just said. Have you ever wondered why Holy Family School is so great? I'll tell you why. The food is awesome. You know, every teacher loves you. They push you to do your best. They give you second chances. And best of all, they have a playground. <laughs> of course, this is my thing. Now, I will explain. The food is awesome because Miss Patty makes mac and cheese in the best way possible. You know, every teacher loves you because they compliment you every day. They push you to do your best. I know this because when I don't try, Miss Hemker tells me I can do better, and I do. The fourth, oops, the second chances part is really helpful, which falls into the do your best category. But since this means a lot to me, it gets its own category. They have the best playground ever. There is a gaga ball pit, a soccer ball field, a fireman pole, slide, monkey bars, a merry-go-round swings, four square, four square, and a basketball net. So as you can see, I love Holy Family a lot. And I hope you do too. It is by far my favorite school I have gone to. essay is by Sebastian Nichols who couldn't be here today because he has a doctor's appointment. This is what he loves about Holy Family School. What I love about Holy Family School. When I first came to Holy Family School, they welcomed me and my family as if we were already all family. With Holy Family School, they teach you to be a better person. They teach you that you can learn and succeed in many ways. I also have some amazing teachers here at my school. The teachers are nice, and they help me learn not only schooling, but also life lessons. These life, life lessons I take everywhere I go with me. I can remember my first day with Mrs. Webster. She is an amazing teacher. Even though I, I, was, hard, I was a hard kid to handle, 
she still showed me love and compassion. I can also remember my second grade teacher, Mrs. Miss Boucher. She also helped me through some times in my earlier years, but never gave up on me. My next teacher, Miss Johnson, was amazing as well. I have to say she never gave up on me either. When I was having a hard time to work with to work, she would stay after and help me. My last teacher is Mrs. Hemker, and I have to say she is also amazing after having my sibling before me, and she still has not given up on me when I am struggling. She continues to encourage me to do my best. I can learn and, su and succeed in many ways. I have met many new friends over the years I have been here, and I am grateful I get to talk to my friends. I also have to thank Mr. St. Aubin, who has taught me some valuable lessons in my lifetime. He is an amazing role model, and I would not be where I am today without his guidance and help. He is funny, kind, and caring. I believe that the, that the, Holy, Fam the Holy Family has made me who I am today, and I hope someday I can pass along these lessons I have learned here at Holy Family. I am truly going to miss Holy Family next year when I move on to middle school, but I know I can accomplish anything because of all the help and support of my family. In the end, I hope you all can agree with me how amazing this school and my second family is. I hope one day I can return and show everyone that an amazing man, what an amazing man I have become with the help of Holy Family School and my mother, Sebastian. Thank you very much, students. One of the things that I'll point out is what is obvious. What is obvious is Holy Family School and our parish, it's not just buildings, is it? It's about who's in the buildings. And even in your many essays, not just these three, you over and over again recognize people who have answered God's call. You recognize not only your parents, but your teachers and our staff as being people who show you the path of life, and who show you Jesus in life. I am grateful for them too. You know, it's especially important in Catholic Schools Week to be thankful. So I'm going to have you stand for a moment and turn in. Teachers, you get to stay still and staff. But the rest of you, turn toward the nearest teacher or your teacher or the staff people that are here. And I want you to turn toward them and look them square in the eye. And together we're going to say thank you to them. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you can turn back toward me. You know, in the news today, there's a lot of talk about teachers who are struggling to get back to school and other schools. We pray for them. We all do. But we can't help but be grateful for our teachers and for all the people who make it possible for what we've been able to do and will continue to strive to do. So this Mass that we prayed in Thanksgiving to God is really important. It's really important to be people who give thanks to the Lord for our blessings. And those blessings have come when we all have done our part, whether that's as simple as putting on a mask or standing a little bit farther apart or just making sure that we're all here to do our best and to grow and stay on track to be disciples. So thank you to everybody, but especially thank you to our staff and teachers. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We go in peace.
in thanksgiving from our students and our staff of Holy Family to all who support our school.